What's that? I couldn't hear what you were saying over the sound of the audience jacking off to the A24 logo. Dang, only an hour away from being a mediocre Matchbox 20 song. Ooh, movie opens up on tongue wrestling. Maybe someone will actually explain the rules so I can figure out how my college girlfriend was always able to declare herself the winner. I love you. You don't have to say it back. She does. I'm sorry, I just... I love you. You don't have to say it back, but I'm gonna double down on it. But this is in no way pressure for you to say it. I'm just saying it over and over again with no expectation of your response whatsoever. Promise. They're not as nihilistic as they look on the internet. Man, movie just exposed our entire sh right there. Who is that? My mom. <laughs> Who will freak? She's a freak because she's texting her mom? Based on the two minutes I've spent with Sophie and B, this is an extremely confusing relationship. I'll take roads that can go f themselves for $400, please. Ugh, this f***ing window. That Sophie will not attempt at all to fix, even though they are only an hour away from a f***ing hurricane. At least put some trash bags around the opening, or see if David will let you park it in the garage. As we look at this estate from above, I'm just going to add 10 sins here and now for the fact that nobody ever checks for ticks in the entire film. Remember later on, when this car won't start, that it's because of her checking her eyebrows in the mirror. It's vanity's fault. Ah, Nirvana Pete Davidson. When Sophie and B pulled in a few minutes ago, we saw a clear shot of the pool and there was no one around it. So how f***ing long have they been underwater? Because it's been at least four or five minutes from the time Sophie pulled the car in the driveway and Tom Cruise was only able to hold his breath for six minutes underwater after being trained by f***ing Navy SEALs. Most people are lucky if they can hold their breath underwater for two minutes. All these people being underwater for this long is all the bullshit. Considering how soon the hurricane is supposed to hit, why are all these supplies still in their packaging? Batteries are hard enough to get out of the package when the power is on in the house. Also, I have to say, love the podcast. Oh, f this movie is being timely. It's a hurricane. It's a hurricane party. Movie contains a hurricane and a hurricane party, but does not contain anyone getting rocked like a hurricane. That all you got, Yelling at a hurricane, and I just double checked with Klaus Mina, and no, that does not in fact count as being rocked by a hurricane. Jordan is addicted to bees, personal space. Like, it's kind of hot. Like, if you saw me coming out of a 7-Eleven. The most unbelievable thing about bodies, bodies, bodies is the idea that a rich douchebag kid like David would ever have stepped foot in a 7-Eleven. This is your first relationship? Maybe it's the point, but any inappropriate question of this magnitude will get you a sin every time. F***ing Emma. Dr. Zhivago is my favorite film. Thinking Dr. Zhivago was a good film is sin-worthy on its own, but favorite film? Jesus Christ, Emma, I'm really starting to hate you. Like, to the power of at least 10. He bites her and she says, Al, what the f***, and then immediately goes right back to kissing him and gets bit again. And I say, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Who wants to play bodies, bodies, bodies? Roll credits. Literally, every single time we play, people start fighting. Pickleball's the same way. Snorting cocaine in a pink sweatsuit. They decided to play bodies, 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 which is just your standard party murder game. But after going over all the rules, they pause first for a game of slap each other silly and take a shot. I don't want to be friends with any of these people. If all the lights have to be off, why is B allowed to use her phone as a light? Are there actual rules to this game? Because it doesn't seem like there are. And you named your f***ing movie after it, so I would like a little more consistency, please. And to see some more slapping, if that would be okay. Will someone tell Neon Girl that half the point of this game is staying alive and solving who the murderer is, and Neon is super visible and attention drawing? That would be so f***ing obvious if I were the killer. But why would it be obvious? They drew pieces of paper, right? So the killer is totally chosen at random, so no one would be an obvious pick. Best defense is a good offense. What the f*** does that even mean, Greg? What's up? Best defense is good offense. What, what, does, that, what does that mean? Oh, um, you, you know, best defense is a good offense. This is the most repetitive movie of all time. This is the most repetitive movie of all time. I love you, but when you swallow, it's just f***ing, like, why? Not liking it when your girlfriend swallows. Are you f***ing talking about us behind my back? No. Yes. No. Yes. See, the problem isn't that you guys fight every time you play bodies, bodies, bodies. The problem is that you're terrible people. Ass light, shut up, it's a dumb word. He did the thing while talking about the thing. David, that's really mean. Says the woman who just called David and Emma out for their lack of a sex life. I vote David. Fourth. Why exactly is David so upset here? We find out later Jordan was actually the killer. So what would it matter if David was voted to be the most likely? He's not the fucking killer in the game. Wait, they do this before every round of bodies, bodies, bodies? The violent shot-taking slap game is part of the pretend murder-guessing game? Was that, was that from a storm? Was that really a question that someone asked? Why else would the lights have gone out during a hurricane? I'm starting to be more and more shocked this group of friends hasn't already had a night where all of them were killed from a mix of their own stupidity and hubris. Theo, you can't fool him! Did you watch SVU? It's evidence! Alice thinking that anyone under 75 was watching Law & Order SVU in 2022. Get some f***ing help! Wait, do you have a license? 
Doesn't she know I have the light on? Don't worry, it's a hurricane. I'm sure she'll be fine. So after finding dead Dave, they just leave on foot? What the sh Why not go back inside, wait for power to be restored, and call 911 then? No one would blame you for this, it is a hurricane! Oh, you're looking for the vehicle. If you knew we were coming to a hurricane party, why'd you park so far away? I, I think I left the light on, on the mirror. Vanity is such a bitch! This does end up being Jordan and all is well, but have these kids not watched Scream? Because if they had, they would have learned the art of voice boxes that can make you sound like anyone. If they would watch Scream, they would save time. There's a formula to it. A very simple formula. We did shrooms and Max told everybody that he was in love with Emma. I realize the movie wants to have a tertiary character we haven't seen yet, so there's another red herring floating around out there. But because we've never met Max and don't know shit about him, these scenes where he's mentioned carry zero weight for the rest of the movie. Don't you think it's a little bit strange that he hasn't, like, woken up yet? Why would that be strange? This is a big fucking house. Maybe he's got the door closed. Maybe he's got a white noise machine. Shut the fuck up, Jordan. You are not helping. Do you know where he lives? Do you know how much fucking money he makes? They question her like this for a while instead of just going upstairs to see if Greg is asleep in bed and or if there are any murder weapons or blood near him. Walking. 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 Excitement? It's hilarious to me that these women believe there is a killer in or about the house. And so they turn on all the flashlights and slowly walk as a group to go investigate. Like, why not just lie down and scream, I'm a willing victim! So, are there any guns in the house? Guns? No, no way. Dave is acting a dick, but his politics check out. Thinking political views and gun ownership are mutually exclusive. David's dad does own a fucking giant sword. Sweet! Chekhov's unsnorted cocaine! That shit is definitely coming back. I know Emma is freaking out, but she couldn't have washed some of that blood off before getting into bed. It's gonna be hard to get blood out of those sheets. Taking Xanax without a liquid, that shit tastes like poison and God help you if you let it touch your tongue. Max was really angry at David. I'm serious, he looked like he was gonna do something really- This girl only saying this just now is super frustrating as a viewer. I can only imagine how annoying it might be as an actual character in this film. What the hell is on his face? It's his light therapy mask. His seasonal depression. I can't figure out if this movie is just making fun of mental health issues or is just making weird fun of the type of person that talks about them like this, but either way, it's f***ing weird. Seasonal depression is a thing, and one of the treatments is light therapy. And this ends up feeling like one of the movie's jokes about modern online hipster life when it's really just a real thing that isn't a punchline. Why didn't you answer me? Were you calling for me? Yeah. I had my headphones in. And even if he didn't have his earbuds in, he's in a f***ing closed off gym in another section of the house. Why is this question? Are you guys still playing werewolf? I don't understand this dialogue. This feels more like Lee Pace said the wrong game name and they just kept it in because they didn't want to have to do another take. Give me my knife back. What the f*** is going on? I kind of feel for this guy, but he's also Greg and all Gregs are worth sinning. Just a reminder, this is all happening in the gym, because this house has a gym. Don't forget the main target here, people. I mean, he's the only one who served in the military, right? Equating military service with being murder capable. Here's some more on-screen vomiting I could have done without. Thanks, Hollywood. Go change your shirt. I feel like they all should be changing some shirts and some clothes. Why would you want to be walking around covered in blood? When the going gets tough, go snort that cocaine you found earlier. You're so toxic. Accusing someone of being a Britney Spears song. So we get a little bit more of the story here. We find out Sophie is David's best friend and that Emma has been dating David for three years and that at some point Sophie dropped off the face of the earth. But honestly, while all of that is new information, I still feel like I know nothing about these people and their relationships. Changing your shirt because of puke and blood, but then using a bloody hand to pick out the new shirt. Washing your blood-stained hands with water from a closet jar instead of using a sink. This is not how you wash blood off your face, FYI. Giving drugs to an emotionally unstable person. This movie spends a good third of its runtime having characters look for other characters in the house. It shouldn't be this f***ing hard to stay together. And Sophie told B to go change her shirt. So why were they so confused that she wasn't in the room with them? Jordan stands there for a long f***ing time. And I can't figure out if we're supposed to think she does or doesn't see B. She f***ing should see her. Not only is B not hiding very well, but she has her f***ing phone light shining in her face. So if Jordan did see B, why did she walk away? But Jordan's actions make very little sense in this movie. It's almost as if she knows she's in the middle of a murder mystery and she needs to be the main red herring. Why is Alice or any of them walking around alone as much as they are in this movie? If they think there's a killer in the house, then why would splitting up seem like a good idea? And yes, I know that these are the things that happen in thrillers and horror movies, but that doesn't make it any less idiotic. Why is there a green exit sign at the end of this hallway of this mansion? Those signs are for commercial buildings, which tells me you shot this hallway scene in an office building and not the main house. Bust it! We will find out that David accidentally killed himself, which is actually kind of brilliant. But the convenience of Emma falling to her own death without the assistance of anyone else is too much convenience for me to not sit. <coughs> she screams bloody murder about a bloody murder and it takes a really long time for anyone to respond. 
Oh no, Emma is dead. I'm broken up, except for the fact that she was largely insufferable. There is no killer, but at least people are being taken out in order from most annoying to least annoying. And for that, I am thankful. It's following the same pattern. The deaths, David, Greg, Emma, David, Greg, Emma. It's not. The only victim in the game was Greg. David and Emma were being accused of being the murderer, but they weren't victims. We're all cooked out. Maybe that's the goddamn problem, Alice. You show up here. Start smiling at my boyfriend. This movie is like a rich girl's take on Lord of the Flies, and it feels exactly that derivative. I googled you, and there was nobody with your name who graduated from Utah State this year. This is the problem with the internet. Everyone is a PI. Everyone can dig up something. But she said she went to Utah State. Not sure she ever said she graduated, but the movie and Jordan don't need to chase that down because they've already changed your opinion about her with a single piece of doubt. Also, in the during this hurricane, did you manage to connect to the internet to fact check this person? And I'm sure the response will be that you did this before the power went out, but if that's the case, you sure took your sweet ass time deciding to speak on it. Also, also, is it really that easy to look up what college someone went to and whether or not they graduated? Because if that's the case, that is all kinds of f***ed up. The biggest shock of this movie is Sophie doing jack shit while her lifelong friends throw her girlfriend out into a hurricane because of some unsubstantiated bullshit. Sophie loses all my respect right here and now, and I'd be fine if B ends up smashing her head with a rock. God f***ing damn, Sophie. Also, this is a giant f***ing house. They could go lock her in another room or anything other than throwing her outside in the middle of a hurricane. Are there people who would overreact to this extreme? Of course, but Alice hasn't been shown to be one of those people until now. It would make more sense if Jordan was the one throwing her out. She is able to push down that window that was left partially open earlier, and good for her and for the movie's foreshadowing, of course, but she could just as easily break this goddamn window with a rock, no? Eating flaming hot Cheetos like this with wet hands and with no regard for your near future digestive progression. Listen, I was told by the police when I was in seventh grade that sniffing other people's underwear was a crime, so just so you know, wait, shouldn't I have said that? I gotta be honest, this hurricane seems pretty inconsequential. Just making everyone who goes outside wet, basically. Movie never chooses to show us where this f***ing dog is, and I just want to know if he or she is all right. Is that too much to ask? And here's a bunch of random tools sitting right here on this counter, because you never know when you're going to need a wrench or a pair of pliers before you head out the doggy door. Why would I kill David? Why would I kill David? Why would I kill Emma? They are literally my oldest friends. You just f***ing met them. How dare you? Why would I? 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 She thinks Jordan is the killer, but she just casually saunters up to Sophie like murder Jordan isn't standing right f***ing there. I wanted to tell you, I just, I just really wanted you to like me. This works, or cocaine is a hell of a drug. Take your pick. We had to narc on you to your f***ing dad so we'd cut you off and ship you off to rehab. Drugs and addictions can tear friendships apart, and I have no idea what the actual truthful past is for these characters. But what I do know is that I'm going to add 1,000 sins to this movie in the next 30 seconds if Jordan doesn't turn off her bright-ass headband flashlight, and I f***ing mean it. You ran away to go write your memoirs. It's creative nonfiction, which is a valid response to life in an attention economy. Look, I realize the movie is trying to say more about how social media and influencers and content creation has warped our views of long-standing social constructs and rules, but it's also trying to be a full-on murder mystery. So I'm forced to belly laugh at the pinpoint satire while still wiping my mouth from puking over the violent deaths. Also, even though it came out before social media exploded, I feel like Cabin in the Woods did a much more efficient and effective takedown of these needy personality types feeling the need to be the main character in the story. Feelings are facts! And that's when Sophie finally lost me for good. Despite my utter hatred for the movie's anti-Sophie tandem of Jordan and Alice, who are both hateful, spiteful beings projecting their own self-loathing onto everyone else all movie long. You schedule everything in your f***ing Google Calendar, including sex. Don't knock the sex scheduling. It's way easier than having to figure out the meaning behind your partner's signals and signs. Just tell me, are we having sex on Tuesday or aren't we? First of all, a podcast takes a lot of work. Here's some more send-up of content creators, but it honestly feels dated. I think that's it. This movie is late to the party for satirizing social media influencers and content creators. Maybe they shot it in time to be timely, but they released it too late. Who could date a f***ing spreadsheet with a superiority complex? It's like... It's like Nobody here is a really good person, so I feel comfortable saying that I would have shot Alice way before Jordan did. Alice is still walking on that leg that Jordan just shot the f*** out of. Four angry, stressed out people wrestling in a dark room over one gun. What could possibly go wrong? I agree with Jordan here, even though Jordan is evil. Even the devil is right twice a day. Wait, I may have messed that phrase up. Two characters violently wrestle over a gun as it fires several times and the camera work is shakier than a Bourne movie. <laughs> well, you're not gonna walk away from that. But she survives it longer than she should. Jordan clearly attended the Stormtrooper school for aiming at things. And now we have more running downstairs. I've never wanted a movie to be set in a single story house more than I do bodies, bodies, bodies. Did you kill Emma? No. Did you? 
This movie has a lot to say about blindly trusting your friends, but then it throws in two relationships that are merely weeks old, and the real blind trust issue sh ends up being about those couples and not any of the years-long relationships or friendships. We have to stay together! Maybe if you had actually thought of the staying together plan earlier in the evening, a lot less of you would be dead. Everyone hiding in this movie is required to also be using a flashlight so that they will be easily seen from a great distance. <laughs> ah, jump scare hugs! It's okay. I mean, until the police show up and Sophie's rich family gets her off, but B has to serve consecutive life sentences for five murders. But other than that, so okay. <laughs> this phone still works. This reveal that David wasn't murdered, but died from an acute onset of stupidity is actually hilarious and earns the movie a sin off. What happened? Max payoffs. You need to learn some manners, Brandon. <laughs> you don't have to say it back. I'm sorry, I just... I love you. That's a pretty big matzo ball hanging out there. <laughs> hey, did I win? Yes, I Dad. told you guys. I it wrong! <laughs> you can't handle the truth! This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus. Just like me. Listen to the sound of the trees breathing along with you. Feel yourself rooted into the ground. You look weird. Is that a pajama top? No. Yes. Well, I see what's going on here. I am smack dab in the middle of a good old-fashioned catfight.